Hi there, everybody, and welcome to today's Art of Procurement podcast. I'm Philip Heidson, the founder and managing director of Art of Procurement. And as we all know, it's a really exciting time to be in procurement, especially with the pace of technological change. And so today's podcast is part of a special sponsored series that's taking part over the last two weeks of January 2020, where we aim to shine a light on the emerging and growth companies who are changing the way that leading procurement teams are driving outcomes that truly align with corporate objectives. And so we're going to ask an entrepreneur from eight different companies questions about what gap in the market their solution addresses how they differentiate their technology, and what the tools look like in action. It's a great way for you to get to know those who are truly leading the way when it comes to the digitization of procurement. And so in today's podcast, I talked to Pierre Lapri of Pair Angusta, and I first asked Pierre to share Pair Angusta's elevator pitch. Pair Angusta is a procurement performance management software that structures strategic sourcing activities around the project pipeline. So we help mid-caps and large enterprise from all industries uh, to build their sourcing pipeline, Mm -hmm. to report on savings as well as other performance metrics. Uh, And more than just a reporting tool, Perangusta is actually a day-to-day management tool for the buyers and the extended procurement community. In a way, Perangusta um, does for procurement people what Salesforce does for the sales people. We structure the way buyers work. We help the CPOs better manage their team and give more visibility on procurement contribution to finance and the other stakeholders. And we do that in a simple, transparent and collaborative way. So what was the inspiration and what was the gap in the market that you saw? Because I know, you know, from conversations that, that we've had in the past, you know, your background is a procurement practitioner. Um, so, so, so why, what was the challenge that you were looking to try and um, address when you founded Perangusta? So I basically built the solution that I needed when I was a procurement director, as you said, in 2011. Mm -hmm. Um, We were establishing the credibility of procurement in our company, but we were hindered by a bunch of Excel spreadsheets. Uh, And we were facing two challenges, one internal and one external. Uh, The internal challenge is that we were scattered across tens of countries with varying levels of procurement maturity. Uh, We suffered from a lack of coordination, and we didn't really learn from each other. Uh, On the external side, our stakeholders started to understand the the value we brought, uh, but we struggled to provide them with a real-time and accurate picture of procurement performance. Procurement was still a black box. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that's how Perangusta was born. Um, It's to make procurement contribution visible both inside and outside of procurement in the organization. Um, We're giving procurement team an easy and reliable tool to track their activities, to measure their performance, and to share it in an efficient and compelling manner with the rest of the organization. Uh, That that might sound silly, but 99% of our clients come from Excel or SharePoint before they're using Booster. Yes, still the common tools of procurement, or a lot of (laughs) procurement teams. Exactly. And and actually, the interesting point also that stands out is the big suite players, they're more focused on S2C or P2P, but not on what we call PPM, Procurement Performance Management. And that's what we do. Uh, We consider ourselves a new generation of procurement providers. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't want to reap and replace what our customers have. We'd rather work in conjunction with with, with what they have. Uh, that can be a suite or other point solutions. Uh, and, and we do that with standard connectors. We, we connect with most of the typical procurement solution. Uh, the e-sourcing providers like Ariba, Zykus, mm-hmm. Determine, uh, could be Coupa for the P2P, you know, Roslin for spend. Uh, but we also work a lot with, with content providers like DNB or Ecovadis. And, and I believe that this approach of bundling together very expert solution um, is is the future and and we see that as a gap on the market and that's what we're trying to to fill today so when when you talk about um the fact that you are you know helping procurement teams manage their performance you know the category of procurement performance management what when would a procurement professional use uh, pair angusta you know when, at what point in the 
the identification of a sourcing project through to the completion of a project and beyond, you know, where does the usage of that fit? And especially in the context of, you talked about integrating with other providers, you know, um, I'd just love to, to kind of be able to visualize a little bit more about when, where, and how somebody would use Perangusta. What our users and clients are telling us is that they connect to Perangusta many times a week, if not every day, because that's where they have all of their work. So it would go like that. Mm -hmm. Sometime at the end of the year, the procurement team needs to build the roadmap for next year. So the buyers would start uh, collecting the projects and putting them in Perangusta. What it's about, the category, type of savings, the baseline, the ambition, so everything that makes up that project. And so when a buyer starts a project, they would simply change the status saying it's ongoing. Um, they would add what we call comment to reflect the, the latest update on the project and interact with the stakeholders. Um, they would attach a document to uh, give evidence uh, of what they're doing and provide transparency and auditability into the, the performance they're claiming. And at the end of the project, uh, they can report on the savings and, and submit it for approval if that's the, the process of the client. Mm -hmm. The idea is that from identification of the project, we'd capture that into the solution, we'd go through the life cycle of the project, and if the client wants to run an auction or an ERFX, uh, well, they can somehow punch out to our partner solutions. Yeah. If they already have that in-house. Uh, and ultimately, we'd get back the, the result into Perangusta to initiate the, the procurement performance monitoring. Uh, so really, it's a way for the buyers to organize their work. Yeah. It's a way for them to share progress with the stakeholders and prioritize when, when resources are scarce. Uh, it's a way for the manager to understand how the team doing and, and if there are any bottleneck. And it's also a way for the CPO to actually become accountable for the contribution that they are, uh, that they are reporting. And believe me, having this kind of accurate, transparent and real time monitoring is very important when you want to foster the relationship with finance. And, right. and that's one of the key things that we bring to our clients. It's establishing or reinforcing the trust uh, with the business and with finance. So you could have, from a savings perspective, you go through the, the project, the management of the project, and the buyer manages essentially the project in uh, Parangusta and pulls in information from different sources and punches out perhaps to do specific activities, but then brings it back into the tool. So it becomes like a single source um, of truth for everything that happened with that project and allows them as an individual, but also their managers to kind of look at workload across all the different buyers along with a wave plan of what's coming so they can plan for resources. So we have that perspective. Then you move into savings and savings reporting. So you have um, you have had a, um, a finance, for example, approving a savings methodology that is then you're able to track that then within Perangusta so finance can see, yeah, I've approved these methodologies. This is where my savings are. This is how it's calculated. This is where I am today. This is what my forecast looks like. Is that a fair kind of summation or um, is there something, anything else that I may be missing? You're perfectly spot on Phil, well done. Um, and, and really the the idea of having this single source of truth, this auditable single source of truth is mm. key. Uh, and when I was talking about the new generation of procurement solution, this goes actually beyond that. Uh, most of our clients see us as a one-stop shop to get all the information they want because when you are building or running your project, you might have to know uh, what the contract, the existing contract uh, looked like with that provider. Or you might want to know if they are, if they are doing okay in terms of credit scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, or you might want to know if they are good citizens. And because we have so many integration with many uh, content providers, we can pull all that data in real time from the data sources that the buyers have. And they don't have to go running around five different solutions to get a 360 view right. of the situation. So it's it's really a matter of convenience and ensuring that the buyer finally has a tool of its own uh, and something that helps them somehow restore the pride in, in, in what they are doing and in what procurement is bringing to the, to the companies. Mm -hmm. so, so when you have um, new clients who you onboard into Perangusta, 
um what's the best way so what what does a proof of concept look like are they looking at it from a perhaps a category perspective or a a, a business unit perspective that they support where do they start to kind of understand and um, and start using the tools so they can see that capability uh, so funnily enough um, with our biggest client that has a thousand buyer in the world we went big bang right because if you want to actually manage your pipeline and your performance yeah. you can not only manage half of that mm-hmm. um, we have some clients who decided to go on a, on a more limited scale pilot with three countries uh, it was a three month pilot actually they stopped it after a month before because it was okay for them mm-hmm. so we're very we're very easy to get started with because you need to understand what your organization looks like how you report savings who your users are and that's pretty much it and funnily enough when we actually signed the contract with the client, more and more, we had already done a, a quick proof of concept in the previous weeks with them uh, because that's so easy that we can do that in the pre-sales uh, stage. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take that much time, and meaning that whenever they're ready to engage, uh, we don't need much work to reach the, the, the final setup of the platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, just import existing data if they want to, to get their history, but that's it. And it's only a matter of days to, in most cases, to, to get the solution uh, started. Uh, and even, we don't even talk about training for the users. It's more a question of onboarding, mm-hmm. showing them around the solution, and reinforcing the way they have to build projects and monitor performance. The biggest challenge in terms of change management is usually making sure that the users understand the savings policy rather than using the solution. And one thing that our clients particularly like is uh, the tool doesn't require any development. It's all about configuration. Uh, And this is key because the tool supports the methodology and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we generally recommend to activate as many features as really required to get started to generate better adoption from the users and not not somehow uh, distract them from the essential or, or, or put too much on their plate to begin with. Uh, But because it's so easy to change the configuration, uh, you can then have the platform and the setup evolve as you grow and and as you increase in maturity. And that's a very compelling value proposition because you have a sustainable investment in technology that will grow with you without having to invest again in in customization or professional services. And so if... If a listener, um, you know, is interested, they would like to reach out, learn a little bit more, and, and maybe chat directly. What's the best way for them to do that? So our website, of course, mm-hmm. uh, but also on our YouTube channel, uh, where you will find some customer testimony, a quick demo. Yeah. Uh, but the best way is to get in touch with our customer community or join us for one of our bi yearly users club. Um, during those events, our clients come together and share their best practices on Perangusta, but more generally on procurement. Uh, the last one was last week, and we had 80 people sharing on how they elevate the role of procurement in their organization. And, and of course, Perangusta is a part of that, but it goes beyond. And that's a very uh, interesting way of, of getting more than just right. software. Right. Well, Pierre, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing a little bit more about Perangusta. Um, if anybody is interested in learning a little bit more, what we'll do is we'll include um, all the links that you shared on our show notes page and all the show notes for all the episodes in this special startup series will be at artofprocurement.com slash startup series. Um, Pierre, I just want to thank you one last time for joining me today. Thanks for tuning in to this special startup series on the Art of Procurement. To listen to the entire series and for the show notes pages that accompany each episode, please go to artofprocurement.com slash startup series. 